Hi, thanks for dropping by. I've not made a lot of progress with the line build recently. Uh, in this video I'm going to show the making of the pistons. It's a very easy job, so hopefully to add some interest I thought I would include some footage showing what I use to make these videos. In the next video I'll be making the piston rings and that should be pretty interesting. Meanwhile on with the show. Point oh one millimeters over. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to um, smooth that down to size. Spot on. That's pretty much perfect. There's not any rock on there. Maybe just slightly oversized, but I think that's good. Just 
left the edges on his boots. Okay, that's the first off. I'd have to go back on the chuck to get this other side faced off and counterboard. But I'll continue with the material that's left here to make another one up to this stage. It's a pretty good fit on the piston rod. I can't detect any player there, although I would have liked it to be a slightly tighter. But I think that will be fine. So that's the pistons complete and fitted to the piston rods. It's a critical component but very simple to make. I will make some custom lock nuts to um, make sure that these nuts don't come loose on the final assembly which I'll cover in a future video. So I've temporarily fitted one of the uh, back plates on the cylinder so we can give it a try and it fits in there beautifully So I've made a clearance between the piston and the cylinder of 0.05mm which is just slightly under 2 thou which I think should be okay but it seems to be perfectly in alignment so happy with that Most of the filming I do uh, uses a Canon SLR camera this gives some very good quality audio and good quality um, video I do most of my video in the 1080p uh, high resolution. When you see the uh, handheld shots, for example in the shaper, I do that using a handheld uh, flip camera. This is quite the ancient. But it does good video and pretty good audio as well. Uh, but this is in 720p. I don't think they make these anymore but it's a shame because they're a really good camera. And this is the flip camera. It's very basic. Basic, there's no settings you can change. But it does a good job. So I think it adds a bit of interest to a video if you can show a shot from different camera angles. And up to now that's meant either using the Canon SLR camera in different positions so that's a number of setups or just using the SLR camera along with the uh, the flip camera um, I've just recently bought a GoPro 6 black 
Um, it came with a microphone. First time I used it was a bit disappointing, but I've uh, managed to learn a little bit about the settings, and so I'm getting much better results now. This microphone that came with it um, is not producing very good audio, so that's something I need to try and prove. So what I do at the moment is any video I take with the GoPro, I uh, sync it with the audio on the uh, Canon SLR. I've got to do that in the video software. So other than using the tripod, this is how I'm mounting my camera. So I'm using a converted TV wall bracket, which has got a camera mount attached. So it's a bit Heath Robertson, but it does the job. So this is dead easy just to move to a, a different position. And I can do some shots at the mill. Other than that I use a tripod. So I'm looking to make a bracket uh, so I can attach this to the table and get some uh, closer up shots without using the tripod. So the good thing about the GoPro is that I can uh, mount it on a ma magnetic stand. So I can very quickly change uh, the angle of the camera. And I can get up really close. And this is another camera mount attached to my lathe. So the workshop's in a bit of a mess at the moment, with lots of junk lying around. The reason for that is I'm busy sorting out my drawers, trying to make them tidy. Unfortunately what goes back into the drawer is less than what came out. So what came out just lies around the bench for now. To give you an idea, this is um, a drawer that hasn't been sorted yet. This one has. Alice has this one. And has this one. And this one. The same here. So I'm using business card boxes to uh, sort out my milling cutters. This is a software I use for editing. I'm using Hitfilm Express. I did try some other video editing programs such as uh, DaVinci Resolve, but my low spec computer couldn't handle them very well, so Hitfilm Express works quite well. This is the video I did for the piston rods. <laughs> So when you look on the timeline, you can see there's a lot of little clips there. So this takes quite a lot of editing. I think this one took me about five hours to edit. So a 15, 20 minute uh, video can take sort of five to eight hours of editing. You see these videos on YouTube showing lots of guys machining stuff. There is actually quite a lot of time goes on in the background to do the editing for these uh, videos. So I probably use less than 1% of the power of the software. It includes lots and lots of features, uh, lots and lots of effects. Um, you can change colour, you can change audio, you can put in starbursts, um, gradients, uh, all sorts of different things. Um, so I'm going to explore some of these in the future, so you may see some experimentation with my videos in the, in the near future. So I hope that added a little bit of interest and thanks for watching. It's quite a nice day outside, so I think we'll go for a little drive to finish off. Mm -hmm.